There is an easy way to draw a prop like this little treasure chest using simple perspective rules, but before I start, today's video was kindly sponsored by GameMaker. If you are a person who has always wanted to try to make your own game but doesn't know how to code, GameMaker got you covered. Try out their free pre-made templates where you can design your levels, change all the sprites and create the game without any coding. Yes, you heard it right. With the Woods is an amazing free template in GameMaker that has all you need to create your own platformer. The first level is already made and the second level is your empty canvas where you can start creating your game. And the best part is that you can add your own art and touch to it. The whole template is so easy to use, but if you have some troubles, you can find a full tutorial playlist on their channel and follow along. Download the Game Maker and Windy Woods template from the link in the description below and thank you Game Maker for sponsoring this video. To start off, we'll need a perspective grid. I already made one, but I'll show you the easy way to make your own without drawing every guideline by hand. We're going to use the two-point perspective for this chest, very easy and simple. To do that, go to this polygon tool under the geometrical tools. Here are the settings for this tool, but you don't have to change anything here. Just make sure you have the same settings I'm showing you right here. Then you can hold shift and alt at the same time to create a shape from the center of the canvas. And I suggest changing the color of the shape to better see it on canvas. And then go down and here where you see this little star icon, change the amount to 1%. After you've done that, you'll get this star looking shape, which will serve us as perspective guides. And the center of the star will be our perspective point. The next step is to zoom out the canvas and increase the size of the guidelines by holding the shift and move it outside the canvas. You'll probably need to adjust the size a little bit more and then duplicate the shape and by holding shift again, slide it to the other side. And here you can adjust the space between them as you like. And this purple line that you see between the two shapes will be the horizon line. You can see that you can adjust the position of these shapes however you like. And for this chest, I will move it a little bit up because I want to be able to see the top plane of the chest. Now that we have our guidelines, we can start sketching the chest. But here's the little trick. If you're still not sure about using the guidelines, you can create the base shape first. In fact, I almost always use the base shape for drawing something in perspective and then I go over them with sketching. In this case, the shift is our best friend, okay? Here's a little tip. In Photoshop, if you make a dot on the canvas and hold shift, you can create straight lines wherever you place another dot. Then that other dot will be the starting point for the next line. Make sure to use a hard one brush without the opacity or pressure. And now I'm looking at the area between the horizon line and the bottom of the canvas and somewhere in the center of it, create a straight line by holding the shift. Then create the right side plane, which will be shorter and the left plane, which will be the front side of the chest. And for this, we are simply following the guidelines on the grid. Now we can clearly see where the bottom plane is and we can connect it. Draw the straight line up going from that corner and some lines won't be perfectly laid on the guidelines, but we can still follow the nearest line and form the plane. And now again, by holding shift, you can easily connect two parts. Let's extend these parallel lines that we have to create the top plane. Make sure to do that on a new layer because we will need to erase it later. Okay, now with the shift again, let's create the axis because this way we'll be able to find the center of these planes. Next, lower the opacity of that layer so you can draw on a new one. And now comes the hardest part of all to freehand these arched lines. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to make them even as much as possible. And of course, help yourself out with the guidelines to connect the edges. It is time to start sketching. I sped up the sketching process, but if you want to see a full time video of sketching this chest, please let me know in the comments below. And in general, uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing full duration videos and I'll make sure to deliver them to you. I started by lowering the opacity of the base shape, making a new layer on top of it and started sketching. As you saw, I changed the height of the chest to make it more stylized, but you can keep the original height of the chest and just sketch on top of it. And I actually had an original sketch that I did in my sketchbook. So I followed that little sketch in case you're wondering how I'm able to sketch it without too many changes or trying different stuff. Uh, but the time where I actually experimented a lot was the coloring process. And you can watch that process video after you watch this one. Uh, but yeah, there I really struggled to make color choices, but I'm pretty happy how it turned out. For the sketching process, I suggest using the digital tools you have in your software. For example, I like to use geometric 
geometrical shapes like ellipses to help me out with rounded objects and I also use a lot of lasso tool and duplicating and these tools are really useful when it comes to speed and overall process. Sometimes I like to challenge myself to draw without the grid lines at all. I would turn them off after the base shape, then I'll try to follow the lines that I already made in the sketch. And it is a great practice to understand the perspective and I think it could be really useful, at least, at least it was for me. We all know how practicing perspective can be overwhelming and sometimes boring, okay? with drawing the same boxes in the pr different perspectives. Uh, that's why I feel like this is a great practice to turn those boxes into something interesting. For example, like treasure chests like this one or fantasy books. But of course, you can try more complex scenes, maybe even with more perspective points. But if you're just starting out, I suggest starting like this or even with only one perspective point if this still feels too overwhelming. But I promise you, after you draw five chests like this, you'll be able to draw it completely without the grid. And I honestly thought I wouldn't be able to draw without the perspective grid like ever. Uh, but yeah, I was wrong. Try it out and let me know how it went. And if you want to share your progress somewhere and receive feedback or you need help with your work, feel free to join the Discord server where we do different challenges together, share the artworks, and as a bonus, you'll be the first one notified about my latest posts and updates. So yeah, link is in the description below and you are more than welcome to join. And that's it for today's video. If you found something useful here, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.